Hey, this is Superdell, uh, back again. I've had a lot of people ask me to review the, uh, the Tucker Gott's friend death thing and explain exactly what did happen and, and go over Tucker's video. I don't know, people ask me these things because they want to get this, you know, the reality of it and what is being said, is it true, is it false? So I went through the video and I made a whole list basically of everything he said and I will react to it. So I apologize if I'm not crying going, oh, another death. I mean, way over 80 people have died on death trap gear. It has nothing to do with the sport. Absolutely nothing. So what happened? The guy's flying a total death trap gear, didn't have any proper training, doesn't know what the freak he's doing on garbage gear. I've been warning people about flying total death traps for 18, 20 years. And a guy dies on a death trap. What do you think happened? So let's go through what Tucker Gott says, which is kind of absurd. First, right off the bat, oh, this is a tragic accident. It's not a freaking accident, okay? If you throw a rock at a window intentionally and smash the window, are you gonna go, oh my gosh, it was a horrible accident? No, if you fly a total death trap glider that has almost a 100% chance of killing you and then you die, that's not an accident. An accident, is when you do everything to stack all the odds in your favor and something outside of the scope of normal happens and you die. Flying a death trap glider where you have pretty much 100% chance of death, you're gonna die. It's not an accident. And calling it an accident is totally deceptive. They're trying to deceive people away from the actual reality. Okay, it wasn't an accident. It's guaranteed to happen. That's why you don't fly total death trap gear. Um, then they say, this is all, this guy's like the most safe and responsible pilot. The guy's flying a total death trap, the worst gear in the market. And he never went through super training. So where's the basic skills and understanding of the sport and understanding not to fly total death trap gear? It, it, so it's like you try and pretend it's an accident. This guy's safe and responsible. No, you're not responsible flying and promoting total death trap gear. That's not safe. That's not responsible. That is absolute the opposite of safe and responsible. Most people who die on death trap gear are flying straight and level. These guys will lie and go, oh, he was doing acrobatics close to the ground. That's the number one cause of, of death. No. These people fly straight and level, one collapse, bam! They do a backflip 180 and lock into a face down spiral, which that's how it works almost every single time. Okay, then the first thing he starts hitting is saying it's a stall. Yeah, oh, well, the most likely thing is uh, a deep stall. What the freak? A deep stall flying straight and level? No, do you know what happens to get a deep stall? In order to make your glider stall, you basically have to take a wrap on the brakes, bury the brakes as hard as you physically can, where if you're flying a trike, you now basically are doing a dip with the weight of the trike on your butt. And then you have to hold it there for eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, bam, glider stalls. Do you think this supposedly experienced pilot buried the brakes as hard as he physically can and held it there for eight seconds? The odds of a stall are extremely remote. No. Then, of course, they mentioned the glider is fully open above him, face down in the ground. That's not a deep stall. If you deep stall the glider, you're going to get freaking gift wrapped because when it reopens, it's going to chuck you on a glider that deadly. It's not a safe glider. If it's a dominator, just go poof, reopen, restart. It's violent. A stall is violent on any glider, even a safe glider, but a safe glider is designed to save your life. Death trap glider, you take a collapse, boom, it can chuck you right into the glider and with a trike, you're gonna get tangled, bangled, total catastrophic nightmare. You'd end up in a wadded mess and a piled ball on the ground, not with a perfectly open glider. Perfectly open glider, that's hoax flex. You take one collapse, it does a backflip 180, locks you into a face down spiral, bam, you hit face first, glider's open, but locked in a spiral. It happens over and over and over and over. Okay. Let's see, next thing. Oh, then they play on, they start trying to allude to a worn out glider. Oh, the glider's worn out and there's porosity. So we had a porosity check done. Maybe it fell out of the sky because it just stopped flying. 
Are you freaking kidding me? He's flying a death trap glider. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to do a backflip 180. You're going to take a collapse. Okay, next. Uh, rain disrupting airflow. Literally, he said this. Oh, the rain and moisture, it disrupts the airflow. No, it doesn't. Rain doesn't affect the glider for jack squat at all. So take a look in the links. I'll link the video where I'm flying in a rainstorm gust front, 30 plus miles an hour winds on a 13 square meter. Did my glider go parachutal? No, actually I'm coming in and landing it, spot landing on a pole over and over and over and over. No, gliders do not fall out of the sky because they get wet. Gliders don't give one rat's crap if they're wet, especially if you fly a safe glider. So no, that's not the case. Now, if you were in very little wind kiting on the ground unloaded and your glider just went in the ocean and was completely soggy, then the weight of the glider can make it a little more likely it's gonna fall into a stall if you don't have the wing. But when you're hanging from it, it don't matter if that glider is completely, totally soaking wet with ice on the lines, it don't make crap for difference. So no, that's totally false. Completely false. Again, they're trying to distract you from the fact the guy's flying a total death trap glider, completely uncertified class. Um, let's see, disrupting air, rain and mist don't cause stalls. Again, they're claiming it's a stall and they keep alluding to this deep stall, which is completely absurd. It has nothing to do with it. So no, rain doesn't cause that. Again, no link to my video where I fly in a rainstorm gust front. Um, internal damage to glider. What that means is he hit so freaking hard. So watch any of my videos for the last 18 years. What happens when a total death trap glider collapses? Well, when a hoax flex glider, they pretend is reflex, but there's no such thing as reflex paraglider, doesn't exist. It's actually hoax flex because it's a hoax. When a hoax flex death trap collapses, it instantly does a backflip 180 and locks you into a face down spiral. You hit face first at between 85 and 100 miles an hour excuse me, 80 and 105 miles an hour is about where it's at. Now, how can you go 105 miles an hour? Well, because you pull so many G-forces in that lax spiral that if you weigh 2,000 pounds, well, now your glider will go over 100 miles an hour. So it's very easy when you lock into the spiral. So what they do is they hit face first and, and <clears throat> sorry, being distracted. They hit face first boom gliders open above them and yeah it does cause internal damage to the glider that's yeah how it works when you hit face first on a hoax flex death trap glider i mean this what happened is like this video would be five seconds he's flying a hoax flex death trap any questions amen enough of it that's it okay then they keep pushing all these things to lead you away from the fact the guy's flying the absolute worst, most horribly unsafe glider in the history of time. So then they start pushing, oh, it was out of trim. Whatever, dude. Dude, it's not out of trim. It doesn't matter. Oh, again, note the video of me flying in a rainstorm gust front on a 13 square meter school glider, totally uncertified, that's been beat to crap for the last eight years by students kiting it. And I flew it. No, they don't just fall out of the sky. It doesn't work that way. Trim, no trim, it, it doesn't matter unless you're starting to push brakes. So think about this. If you have to bury the brakes as hard as you can to stall it, now let's say your glider's out of trim. That means instead of pushing as hard as I could possibly to make it stall, now I can ease off three ounces. Okay, so he didn't do a dip with 180 pounds on his body. He did it with 175. Oh yeah, because that made the difference. No, it, glider out of trim, that's not going to cause that unless you're pushing right near stall point and burying the brakes as hard as you can. Again, they push mist or wet on the glider, totally retarded. People have flown right through torrential downpours. I mean, stupidest people on the planet. I didn't train them, but I've seen it done. They're flying in a squall line in Arizona and it's raining so hard, the windshield wipers can't keep the rain off of the windshield. That kind of rain, fly right through it. It don't matter, dude. You could drop the glider in the ocean and immediately pull it out and kite it. It, it doesn't affect the glider for jack squat in flight. They're gonna react extremely similar all it's doing is adding a little bit of weight so let's say you add 
You open the glider, it's not full of water, so it's not gonna weigh 800 pounds. Gliders don't fill with water. Water just doesn't go in. It doesn't work that way. So you're not gonna have it full of water. So if the glider's wet, maybe you add 20 pounds to the glider. Think about that. 20 pounds don't change jack squat to the glider. You could add a 100 pound trike, you could add a tandem passenger. It's not gonna change the dynamics of the glider to add some weight from the, the water. It doesn't matter. Okay, uh, Mr. Wet Trims down isn't near stall point. They're saying, oh my gosh, his trims were down. That puts him so close to deep stall. No, that's like the safe con configuration of a glider. But why were his trims down? Well, very commonly, if you're on a total death trap and you take a collapse, one of the first things you're gonna do is probably pull the trims down because you know you're on a total death trap. So I would suspect it's very possible that he took the collapse trims up and then yanked his trims because if you pull brakes and try and active pilot a death trap hoax flex glider, you actually cause a collapse. So in order to actually interact with the glider, you have to pull your trims down first. So there's a possibility we don't know what actually happened but the Sirocco 2 is a total death trap. Glider trims up, trims down, it's a total pile of garbage. I mean, it's basically one of the most deadly gliders on the planet. I mean, there's a video out there where uh, another totally incompetent person, Mark Honeycutt, pretends to do a review of the Dominator. He's like, oh, it's okay, but I like my Sirocco, but just totally flat out lies, promoting a total death trap glider. So you can watch the video of Mark Honeycutt promoting this total piece of crap, complete death trap, that does not have the performance of the Dominator. So the Dominator's safest glider on the market you can pretty much buy. The Sirocco is basically the absolute worst, most deadly glider on the market. The Dominator has more performance, Sirocco has less performance. What's the point of flying a death trap that has less performance? Um, no, so Mark Honeycutt, yeah, here's another death for you for promoting a total death trap and totally trying to defraud people away from the safest gear. That's the problem, or people like Tucker Gott, Honeycutt, Kurt Fister, Blackhawk, that intentionally try to defraud people away from the safest and best gear in the history of the sport so that they can defraud them into total garbage. By all means, prove me wrong. Post a video. Show that their students can do what super students can do. Show the collapse testing. I challenge you. You want to promote a Sirocco too? Go out. Let's show. Yeah, show me this, the collapse testing. Because the last guy I know who tried that, his name is Wolfgang. And he took a dudek up because he was going to show how safe it was. Climbs to 3,000 feet with a reserve. Pulls a simple asymmetric collapse to show how it would recover. Bam, he dies. Hoax flex backflip 180. Locks him into a face down spiral. Wolfgang into the ground, exactly like Jeff, dead. And all the others, the other Jeff. Remember the Jeff that died before Tucker, who was the previous promotion guy who already died. Tucker's the replacement for the guy that already died on the death traps Tucker's pushing. Jeff, too, is a second Jeff. Then you got Chris, Aziz, Adelson, Dean, Ben. You got Grant, Eric. I mean, the list goes on and on. Clear Julius Gee. The names go forever of death after death after death on this total crap gear. How'd they die? One collapse. They do a hoax flex backflip, lock into a face down spiral, 80 to 105 miles an hour. Boom, face down. That's how it works. I mean, it's a simple fact. There's no maybe, there's no ifs. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Pulling trims down in the air. Yeah, if you get in rough air, one of the first things you're going to do is pull trims down. If you have a real glider, you don't necessarily have to do that because you can cancel trim with brakes. But you can't do that with a Hoax Flex Death Trap. So if you're flying a Hoax Flex Death Trap and you take a collapse, you may very well be likely tempted to pull your trims down to get it out of complete Death Trap mode into mainly Death Trap mode. So you go from absolute 100% chance of death down to 75% chance of death. Okay, it's bigger than that. Um, okay. Then they talk about, let's see, adding weight makes no difference. So then they're going, oh, well, he was overloading the glider. Dude, overloading a glider? No, gliders are designed to take 3,000 pounds. If you weigh 300 pounds, and you pull 10 Gs, that's 3,000 pounds in the glider. That's not a failure for modern gliders. 
That's a working load. You can do that all day long, pull two, 3,000 pounds of pressure in the glider. So adding 100 pounds is not overloading a glider. Posted weight ranges don't mean jack. A lot of that has more to do with paragliding. And so you want optimal sink rate, the lowest sink rate. Now, if you're in that weight range, you're gonna have the lowest sink rate, where if you're relying completely on lift while paragliding, if you have higher sink rate with a small glider, you're gonna be more likely to sink out in lighter lift. Of course, the smaller glider also allows you to fly in stronger conditions, so you get a wider range of conditions. So you're actually very commonly much better off to have more weight on the glider you're actually safer. You're less likely to take a collapse with a glider that has more wing loading and those collapses will recover faster. And if you watch a video of the Dominator being collapse tested clear down to a 14 square meter, they respond just fine as long as you don't get a total death trap glider. The, glide, the guy is flying a death trap glider. That's what happens when they collapse, backflip 180, lock into a face down spiral. I mean, it's not even a maybe. But again, Tucker Gott calls it overweight. Um, again, it's rain. Oh, it's rain, moisture, it's mist. Dude, rain has nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter. It's like your shirt. If your shirt's wet, how much does your shirt weigh? It's a little heavier. Does that make you more likely to fall down because your shirt's wet? Oh yeah, dude, I was jogging and, and it started raining. Boom, I fell on my face and almost died because my shirt was wet. Okay, <laughs> literally, it's like that bad. Okay, adding weight, calling it overweight. Again, saying over the weight range, yeah, no. Okay, no, don't trim up. Then he's saying, oh yeah, if your glider's a little wet, you should trim up and they hit full speed bar. Oh yeah, you went through a little mist. You should fully accelerate the glider. Oh uh, yeah, because you want it in a less safe configuration in case you take a collapse. No, trims up makes it less stable. So your glider's less stable, more likely to collapse, trims up. Adding 20 pounds of water to your glider, and that's if it's totally waterlogged. I mean, if it's totally waterlogged, you might get 20, 30 pounds. It makes almost no difference. You're only adding weight. It makes very little difference. So the glider will fly just fine. They're designed to fly. Don't mean jack. You could go out. I mean, I could probably find videos where, you know, people kited too close to the ocean, stuck a glider in the ocean. We pulled it out and kited it. And they kite exactly the same. It just takes that much more wind to keep that much more weight in the sky. So if you had only three mile an hour wind and your glider weighs an extra 20 pounds, yeah, it's gonna be more likely to float down or stall. But not in flight, when it's fully loaded, it makes doesn't make jack squat for difference. Okay, so then he says trims up. No, again, they're just no freaking clue what they're talking about. Keeps talking about deep stall over and over and over. Obviously, he's never stalled a glider in his life. He doesn't know what it takes to stall a glider. That is not gonna happen on a certified glider anyway unless you are a hamburger short of a happy meal because how do you deep stall a dominator you take a wrap and a half on the controls you bury the brakes as hard and as far as you physically can then you hold it there for eight seconds and the second you feel it break into the stall if it's if you feel it start to go mushy and start to stall if you put your hands up it would instantly recover and fly away and wouldn't give a crap that's again why we train super students 25 60 hours of glider control where they're pulling too much brake stalling their glider thousands of times over and over when it's not loaded and you're kiting in five six mile an hour wind then if you pull eight inches of brake yeah it will stall but we're not talking about when you're hanging under in flight that glider's not going to stall accidentally you would have to hammer the crap out of it and do something completely ridiculous i've literally had newbies take off and it's not uncommon for people's brains to leave the building and they go on information overload. I've had people take off with the brakes buried on their Dominator and fly around for several minutes that way with their brakes pulled as far as their arms can pull. Dominator didn't stall. That's the whole point of certified glider, certified height hook in points. This glider didn't, this guy, Jeff, was on a totally uncertified class glider, death trap, uncertified height hook in points. 
but still the pressure, you have to bury a lot of pressure. It's not something that's gonna accidentally happen. Um, not happening. Okay, talking about deep stall over and over is like ridiculous. Okay, and if you deep stall the glider, the glider isn't going to likely be open, completely open, inflated, face down. If you deep stall your glider, again, especially on a total death trap Sirocco, you're more than likely gonna either gift wrap yourself or be so violent the glider's gonna like, yeah, completely cravat, wad up, ball up. If you're coming down, then the glider's probably wadded in a ball. And it's not good, unless you got so many riser twists, you're still then locked in a spiral. But then again, if you did that, you'd check your reserve sooner. So again, deep stall, highly unlikely, like basically about the least likely scenario. I would think an eagle flying through his wing and balling up the wing and then crawling out and flying away would be more likely than a deep stall. So the, uh, okay, gift wrap. Regular inspections. It's a freaking death trap, dude. Regular inspections of a glider. I mean, again, he's going on trying to distract away from the fact that the guy's flying a death trap. They promote death traps. That's what they do. He never once in his entire video mentions it's a death trap, totally uncertified class glider, complete nightmare of death, one collapse, guaranteed you're gonna take a collapse, and when it collapses, you do a backflip 180. So he's missing that, and he keeps alluding to these other things. So, regular inspections. Who gives a crap? It's like a freaking Dominator, dude. Did you not? Okay, look at the video of search. Paramotor destroyed K2, where one of the most uncoordinated students I ever had goes home, shreds his glider in the prop, like a third of the glider's missing. So he sends it back for repairs, and I took it out and flew it. Watch the video, like a third of the glider's missing. The brake lines, bunch of lines, risers dangling, like a third of the glider's like just shredded and torn and not even there. I flew it, flies just fine. You know, it, it has a little turn in it but I just weight shift against it. I had no brake on one side, so I used torque of the motor to actually turn me to the right, and then I used a little brake to turn me to the left. It's a glider, they're designed to fly. So yeah, it's not, not deep stall, I mean inspections. It's like, it's a waste of time. If you put your glider in a thorn apple tree and then rip the thorn apple tree out of the ground using the glider, and you have a reason to suspect that there's something wrong with your glider, okay, send it in for inspection. But if it has less than 100 hours, the glider looks just fine, who gives a crap? Gliders don't up and fall out of the sky unless you're flying hoax flats death traps. Even if the glider is ragged out, beat to crap, kited by a thousand students at super training, and then I fly it in a rainstorm gust front, they don't fall out of the sky. It doesn't work that way unless Again, go back to the stall. If you have to bury the brakes as hard as you physically can to make it stall, and now you're flying a totally ragged out glider, okay, maybe you only have to bury the brakes to here to get it to stall. You're talking of increments. It doesn't all of a sudden go from, you know, very stall resistant to, oh my gosh, it stalled, I touched the brakes. Yeah, yeah, not unless you're flying a total death trap and they're trying to deceive you away from the facts of why the guy died. So regular inspections, who gives a crap? Okay, the official statement is you should get your glider inspected. No, because in fact, that can actually jack you up. There's so many dishonest people out there doing glider repairs. I mean, literally, I had one of my customers buy a glider that literally had less than 15 flights on it. It's like 10, 15 flights. I'm like, dude, this glider is practically brand new. It's got 10, 15 flights. And I don't BS. If it has 10, 15 flights, I say 10 to 15. Not like the guys in the internet where it's got 2,000 flights and they're like, oh, dude, it's only been kited once. Yeah, no. So I sell this guy a brand new glider. He takes it to cloud nine and has them test it. They told him it was completely ragged out. It was no longer, it failed a porosity test blah, 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 totally just flat out lied to the guy. Blatant dishonesty from Cloud9 Soaring Center. They're, yeah, 
not honest. This literally happened. This is from actual experience of what happened. And the guy calls me up all pissed off. Dude, you sold me a ragged out glider. You said it was like practically new, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, obviously he went off thinking that the glider was no longer flight worthy. I'm like, okay, dude, take it over to the other guys. Have them test it and do the porosity test in front of your face. He takes it over. They porosity test it. And they're like, ah, this glider's brand new. So sending your glider in for inspection, it depends on who you send it to. A lot of these people are very dishonest and they might end up trying to sell you a new glider. I've had it happen other times at other places where people sent in their glider and they told them it was all ragged out, probably time for a new glider, blah, blah, blah. There's so much dishonesty out there. I'd be very careful who you send your glider to. Before you send your glider to someone, talk to me. So the, uh, yeah, anyway, regular inspections, if you do something horrible and really jack up the glider, keep in mind, if you empty a case of 12 out buckshot through your glider, it'll probably still fly just fine. So should you get it inspected at that point? No, just buy a new glider. <laughs> it's like, dude, if you're worried about the glider, there's gotta be something seriously wrong with it. So again, it's like, they're trying to make you think, oh yeah, possibly this glider was older and there's a problem. No, it's a death trap. They're flying a glider they call reflex. All gliders they call reflex are total death traps. No, it's not about getting regular inspections to make yourself safer. Don't fly a freaking death trap, you freaking retard. Okay, sorry, I apologize. I treat everyone like I love them. So, the little explanation. Why am I so direct? because I have love in my heart for all people. I treat everyone like they're my friend and like I love you. So imagine your, your best friend asks you, hey dude, is it okay if I fly this death trap? What do you think your friend's gonna say? Um, well, sir, maybe uh, that might not be a good idea because possibly they, no, you're gonna tell your friend, what the freak retard, no, you don't fly a death trap. So why do you think I tell the truth straight up? Because I love you and I'm expecting you to be a rational human being. If you're not, stay out of the freaking sport. You shouldn't have anything to do with aviation if you react to everything emotionally. Don't do that, it's ridiculous. So anyway, that's why I'm so straightforward tell the truth like it is. Plus, people don't have time to sugarcoat everything. If you need stuff sugarcoated, stay out of the sport. Okay, so yeah, inspections, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, yeah, I mean, I've got gliders. And <laughs> I would fly just about anything. Those gliders are so ridiculously safe when you get a Dominator. But a death trap is a total death trap, brand new. Inspected, unspected, it's a death trap. Doesn't change. Okay. Then he says, oh yeah, if you load the glider up a little bit, the lines could snap and the glider could fail. Dude, the glider's made for 3,000 pounds. Yeah, you could do infinity tumbles and do sats and loops and crank it over, pulling thousands of pounds of loading on the glider. And he's trying to suggest that your glider could fail by adding 100 pounds. <laughs> Really? No. Okay. No. Gliders don't. <laughs> when you had a. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Woo! Yeah. Sorry, Tucker Got. You're batting zero. Zero. Not one single shred. Actually, there was something true that he said in there somewhere. I didn't make a note of it because it's not really important. But he did say something that was accurate in the video which I saw. I should have made a note just so I could compliment something. I wish I could compliment and say something's accurate. But this has nothing to do with putting down Tucker Gott. There is no value in insulting or belittling people. It has zero value. It's actually a negative value. The only reason I share the accurate information is because your life depends on it. And your life is worth more than Tucker Gott's feelings. So F his feelings, I care about your life, I'm gonna give you the facts. Don't fly a freaking death trap. If you're flying a death trap, you're gonna do a backflip 180 and go face first into the ground at 80 to 105 miles an hour. Okay, uh, no lines don't just snap out of the sky because you added a little weight. Oh my gosh, I, I put my GPS in my stuff bag like on the side of my paramotor. Is that gonna overload the glider? <laughs> Actually get questions like these. It's, 
it's rather, yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm like, yeah, no, dude, stop watching Tucker Got videos. Yeah, it makes no difference. Loading the glider up actually makes you safer if you have a quality glider because you have more speed, you have more loading in the glider. It's gonna be more collapse resistant. It's gonna actually recover from collapses faster. It might be a little snappier, but the collapse recovery is totally fine when you have a super safe glider like the Dominator. So that's when you have the skill for it though. Don't go to a smaller glider until you have the skill for a smaller glider um, because they're faster, they handle better, they're more fun. But on the bright side, they're faster, they handle better, they're more fun. On the downside, they're faster, they handle better, they're more fun. So if you have the skills for it, you're actually safer on the smaller glider. But here Tucker Gott's going, oh yeah, don't overload a glider. Oh my gosh, if you're over that weight range, no dude, don't fly a freaking death trap. It don't matter what the rate range is, you freaking die. That's why it's called a death trap. Oh. Okay, yeah, loaded makes it recover faster. Uh, let's see, no, it's not best in the weight range. It's actually safer when you're over the weight range if you have the skills for it. Okay, whole video, Tucker got, oh, my poor friend, oh, it was a terrible accident, on and on and on and on. And I'm not trying to be unfeeling, I'm just kind of a logical, rational person, so I need to deal with the facts and not focus on the emotional side, because a lot of people get emotional. Like, if your dog dies, there's a lot of people that will cry. That happens. They get emotional. It's very common. I'm the guy, if my dog dies, I replace the dog because the dog has a specific duty. That's just me. I don't get emotional. I just react logically, rationally. This is part of life. This is how it works. Good for him. I'm very happy for my dog that died because now he's in heaven and he will no longer have pain and he will be very happy. So if somebody dies, you know, like your dog, be happy for them instead of worrying about it and focusing on the emotional. Let's focus on how to keep you from dying and not get sidetracked by emotional. Okay, here we go. No mention that the glider's a total death trap. Entire video, Tucker got pretending to be an expert. Oh yeah, we're gonna look at all the angles of what could have possibly happened and share this information because I know all about the sport and I'm so smart. Never once mentioned it's a total tat trap glider. Never once. Can you call this guy competent and an expert? Dude, never once mentioned it's a total death trap. I've been screaming the top of my lungs from every rooftop and every angle about the hundreds of people who have died on these death traps. And I've been telling about this for years. Look back through my videos. It's been, what, 18, 20 years I've been warning people since I tested the very first Paramania glider and almost died doing a basic safety test. Like Wolfgang actually died doing the same test. I almost died. It was close, but I finally got it to recover. I did the same thing, climb up 3,000 feet with a reserve thinking, oh, I got a reserve, I'm 3,000 feet, I got altitude, I can work it out. Let's just try a basic, simple, asymmetric collapse. What the fuck are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. I almost died three different times testing these death traps. Why the freak do you think I warn you not to fly a death trap? Now the liars will go, oh, he bashes everything he doesn't sell. Actually, I sell over 200 different makes and models of glider. I can sell you any brand of glider on the planet. I could sell you a Sirocco for $100 less than the Sirocco dealer. But it's a death trap. The difference is I tell the truth and I recommend what you should have. Huge, gigantic difference. Okay. Next, they didn't even mention the dude's on a total death trap gear, the trike. Take a look at the trike he's on. Yeah, that trike, there's a steel bar right under your spine. When you land, you have one steel bar, almost very little crumple zone. You only got like that much crumple zone. Impact a little bit of the suspension. Very little crumple zone. You're sitting on top of a steel bar. What the freak do you think is going to happen? Many people have died on those. You impact the ground, it really doesn't take much. It's like the uh, Paramotor America guy, Glenn Tupper. You know, he's mocking me, calling me names. Blah, 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 dude, you're always bashing. You don't know what you're talking about. You're such a jerk, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, you take one collapse, you pound in the ground, you got no crumple zone. It doesn't take much impact. You're probably going to break your back or die, Mr. Glenn Tupper. And he goes on and on, bash, bam, broke his back. You can watch a video online. Again, it's like, this has happened so many times. Now, 
That's rare. Most of the guys that bash trash and lie about me, they end up dying, exactly like I say. But some of them, like Glenn Topper, broke his back, just barely hitting the ground on a total death trap glider with a pile of crap paramotor like the Parajet. I mean, anyone selling Parajet, Scout, Fly products, all these things, they don't, if you don't have any crumple zone, the first thing to hit the ground is your spine. And it takes very little impact into a rock on the side of a cliff or a mountain to break your back or die. Crumple zone. Not once does Tucker got mention crumple zone. The guy had no impact protection on the unit. He's flying a total death trap glider and that. Okay, so let me explain how deadly these gliders are one more time because one of the last people that died on a Mac Para Charger, same hoax flex death trap, they call it reflex. The guy takes one simple collapse and it does the hoax flex backflip, which you can again watch in some of my videos where you take an asymmetric collapse and the glider literally flips a 180 and the pilot literally stops in flight and gets jerked back the other way as the glider shoots straight at the ground and then locks into a spiral. Well, this guy that just died on the Mac Para Charger, it did the hoax flex death trap death flip so violently he was ejected from the harness okay one collapse and it does the backflip 180 locked into a spiral and it did it so violently he was ejected from the harness okay jeff dies on a hoax flex death trap what the heck do you think happened on and on and on people like tucker make these videos trying to distract you from the truth in every single way. Oh, the glider was out of trim. Oh, he flew through a little bit of mist. Oh, he was a little over the weight range. Oh, possibly he deep stalled it. Oh, maybe the glider was older and the porosity wasn't perfect. Oh yeah, we tested it, it was perfect. All of this, a whole video distracting for you from the fact it's a totally uncertified class death trap glider that's been known for years and years and years. Hundreds of people have died same ways over and over and over. Jeff, Ben, Aziz, Adelson, Dean, Richard, Eric, on and on and on and on and on. Lydia dead over and over and over. And they're like, oh, it's a tragic accident. It's not a freaking accident. When you put somebody on a death trap, it's a death trap. Okay, let me explain the 100% chance of death or close to 100% chance of death. Let's say you take a lifetime of flights and your lifetime of flights is just 10,000 flights in a lifetime, okay? What are the odds you're gonna take a collapse on any paraglider, including a Dominator? If you fly for an entire lifetime, 10,000 flights, what are the odds you're gonna take a collapse? 100%. Actually, on a Dominator, it's probably like 1,000%. Why? Because you lived every time to take a collapse the next day. <laughs> On the hoax legs death trap, you only have about 100% chance of taking a collapse because you won't make it to the second one. You died. So the odds of you taking a collapse on any glider are over 100%, pretty much, guaranteed. I mean, theoretically, it's possible you could go a lifetime and never take a collapse. If you flew for one minute, every 18 years, you might make it. But that's not 11,000 flights. So if you fly 10,000 flights, you're gonna take a collapse because clap, crap happens. And no, that's not because you went out and flew in a thunderstorm. It happens on perfectly smooth, calm mornings. Everything's just perfect conditions and you're flying, bam! You take a collapse out of the blue because conditions change. You fly from one area to another area. You have bodies of air moving. You might have taken off in perfectly smooth three mile an hour wind, but right over there, there's a shear later and there's one body of air moving this way and another going that way and things are moving around and it changes and there's difference in temperature and heating and things happen. Weather changes. Now, the ability for a glider to collapse is why they're so freaking safe. If you get slammed with adverse conditions like that on a hang glider where there's fixed tubes, it can't collapse, it can throw you into an unrecoverable attitude because it can't collapse. Where you take a glider like the Dominator, you could get slammed with a 40 mile an hour gust and it just goes boof, 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 pops right back out. It can absorb that energy while maintaining a glide slope above you, controlling your descent rate. So you're pretty much guaranteed to take a collapse because you're flying cloth and string. That's great if you got a safe glider.
But if you have a glider that does a backflip 180 and locks you into a face down spiral, what's gonna happen? So let's say you have a 100% chance of taking a collapse, which is simple reality of the sport, and you're on a death trap glider where one collapse, you do a backflip 180 and lock into a spiral face first towards the ground. 100% chance of death, or at least close to it. Yeah, there's a possibility you could go, but it's so small, it's really, you're basically about 100% chance of death. So what are the odds that Tucker Gott's gonna die? Pretty much 100%. They die all the time. People like Tucker, he'll talk and talk and pretend he's an eye, bam, he'll die. Then the next guy will come in, they'll talk and talk and talk, bam, then he dies. Then the next guy comes in, they talk and talk and they bash Superdell, call me a liar, make up lies, pretend I kick owls, total lie. Say all these different lies, bam, they die. Then there's the next one and then they lie. It's money. They just want to sell you a total death trap. They don't give one rat's crap about truth. They physically hate truth. Anyone promoting gear like that is freaking evil. It's just sick. There's no reason because you take a glider like the Dominator, nobody can do what I do on a Dominator. No, look at videos. Can you see anyone out there doing what we do on Dominators? So it's like, the Dominator gives you the ultimate in performance, but also the ultimate safety. So why would anyone in their right mind fly a total death trap that doesn't have the performance and isn't as fun to fly and isn't as easy to launch like the Dominator? The Dominator's so easy, you can watch my children, little kids kiting, flying, launching, because it's so safe, so easy to fly, but it has the performance. It's a fun factor. That's why the best pilots in the world fly it, because it's so freaking fun. If it was a dog pile of crap turd, I wouldn't fly it. I wouldn't be out there doing loop-de-doops and all over the place and diving up and down and landing on poles. I would fly a glider that was fun. But the Dominator gives you the safety and the fun. If you fly a death trap, death happens. That's kind of how it works, Tucker Got. Stop promoting death traps. Stop killing people. The number one cause of death in the sport are people like Mark Honeycutt, Tucker Gott, yeah, Aviator PBG, Blackhawk, Kurt Fister, Kyle O. All these guys pretending to be experts while they intentionally, knowingly, and maliciously deceive you away from what is truly the best and safest gear and training on the market. And please, Prove me wrong. Prove that the, the gear that I'm selling and the, the super training is not the best. Please, by all means, if it's not the best, post a freaking video. Let's see, link a video. Show somebody else's students beating my students, showing that they've trained them better. It doesn't exist. They can talk endless crap. The only reason they talk so much crap is because they can't refute any of the facts I share because the facts are so obvious they'd look completely ridiculous trying to refute what I'm saying. It's just simple, basic stuff. So if you wanna be safer, don't listen to Tucker Gotts. Don't listen to Mark Honeycutts. Don't listen to Kyle O's, all these self-proclaimed experts who've literally never had a day of proper training in their life, don't understand the sport, don't give one crap about your life and are out there promoting the most deadly, most horrible gear and instruction in the history of the sport, literally. So has nothing to do with the sport. Death after death after death, that has nothing to do with it. That's like watching somebody die in a motorcycle and going, I'm never driving a Mercedes. Oh my gosh, that guy just died on a motorcycle. I'm not driving Mercedes ever again. It has nothing to do with the sport. If you die following Tucker Gott, it's because you follow Tucker Gott. That has nothing to do with the sport. Don't fly death trap gliders. Don't fly horrible crap gear that hasn't had a safety update for over 40 years. And don't go to people who don't have even the most basic skills as instructors. Don't do it. Use your brain, use your head, do some research, use some logic, stand up for what's right. Once you know the truth, stand up and tell the truth and fight against all of these people lying and getting people killed. Okay, I'm super down. I'm out. Yes, have a nice day. I love you. I tell you these things because I love you. Because I know darn well they're going to bash, trash, lie, call me names. I do it this Despite how much and how evil they are. Because keep in mind, these people have threatened to kill me. They've threatened to rape my children. They've made up every lie they can make up. They post 
total lies as videos and fraud. They call the police on me. They do everything they possibly can to try and damage, harm, and deceive people away from the best and safest training in the world. I still tell the truth because I really don't give a crap. Let them do their evil. I'm gonna stand up for what's right and I'm gonna tell you the truth. Why? Because I love you and I care about your life and I care about you knowing the truth. If you don't follow the truth, well, and then you die. I did my job. Have a nice day.